Hey guys, what's up? Nico here. And in this episode, I'm going to show you guys Brendan, who took $300 and turned it into $500 to $1,000 a month in profit. And as always, links in this episode is in the description below if you're on YouTube, and then the show notes if you're in a podcast player. <laughs> So what's up, Brendan? What's going on, man? A lot, a whole lot. How you doing? Good. Hey, so thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. So why don't you tell us about your business, man? What is it that you sell? Um, how, how you doing this whole 3D printing thing? Uh, so we pretty much range from structural pieces uh, to, man, things that you can put in gardens, uh, I'm trying to dabble my way into cosplay items mm -hmm. uh, as well, but a lot of it being sold right now are uh, things that people didn't even think could be done over here uh, where I am. 3D printing isn't even a thing. So to take an item and, and make it up and sell it is just unreal to them. That's awesome, man. So when you say structural things, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Um, so I recently actually just filled an order. Uh, it was a, a structural piece printed out of ABS, uh, to hold a cabinet up. Okay. Um, they could not find, they actually, the company went out of business and they did not have any way of getting a replacement done. Uh, wow. they couldn't make anything. Wow. So, so you just basically filled in that gap, huh? Yeah. I actually, they gave me the piece that they needed replaced. I modeled it. I modeled it up and uh, took a couple of prototype tries, but I uh, printed in 100% ABS. And uh, yeah, it's on a cabinet right now. Nice, Actually, man. Underneath. So, what did you use to model it? Uh, I used Design Spark. Design Spark. Okay, cool. So we'll link that in the show notes. So, um, how much are you making a month or, or year on your business? Just a rough estimate. Uh, so we recently got actually registered. Um, so I wasn't keeping too much of a record. It was kind of just like a, a side thing. Still really yeah, good. Yeah. But, uh, I would say on an average, it'd be about 500 to maybe about a thousand bucks a month. Hey man, that's significant, dude. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it, that's yeah, 500 varies. cheeseburgers. Well, Same. Thank you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how'd you come up with that idea, man? How'd you come up with the structural stuff? Um, and you know, stuff in the gardens, right? How'd, how'd you come up with that? Um, so it's actually, I, I met a guy online who kind of got me into this. Uh, he, he has his own thing called the brass nozzle. And uh, I used to, when I started out, did thingiverse. And that's where I found, uh, like my biggest seller for the longest time was low, low poly planners. And mm. I just upscaled them to like a ridiculous size and like they're all over this town I live in. You know, they're everywhere. Wow. I've sold hundreds of them. Hundreds nice, of them. Man. Hundreds. You got so you got a good little niche there, pal. Yeah, I'm I'm not the only one in this town that does it. People are starting to pick up on it, but um no one can really produce the quality I produce here. Nice. Yeah, good quality yeah. products always good. Oh, exactly. So a lot of people always come back type thing, but, um, and with the structural things, I didn't even know for the longest time that really was a thing. Like, um, I like got all actually I had a truck, uh, and it needed a latch replaced. Mm -hmm. It was $150 online for a plastic latch. And my buddy, the brass nozzle, um, modeled it up in the States Yes, where he lives, and he modeled it up on like, and I printed it, and I think it cost me all of two bucks or something like that. If that, right? Like, oh, yeah. cents. oh, totally. So that's when I started really thinking about, you know, the things that can be done. And then when people started messaging me, like, hey, I got this, I didn't even know this is possible. And I'm like, 100%, you know, as long as I have the piece, I, I can definitely model it, no problem. Cool, man. So, how did you get your first clients? Like, how did you start getting traction? Um, I actually didn't start this business off 3d printing. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the original goal. Uh, and then when we were on the route to buy a 3D printer, it was a used one. Can't remember the brand of it. And uh, the guy ended up selling it on us before we got there. Uh, so we took that money and invested it into uh, decals and T-shirts. Um, and my business started booming, kind of sadly, but my cousin passed away. So I did. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I filled two, 300 orders of decals and t-shirts and, uh, I, I donated 98% of the funds. I was going to donate it all, but, uh, my aunt said, uh, use those funds to buy yourself a printer. And, uh, I got myself in the door with an Andrews three, uh, completely stock and, uh, pretty much how I got going. But my first clients definitely were more the deco t-shirt thing. Okay. And then, so how do they find a 3D printing side? Well, I just, I kind of left it all connected. Oh, okay. So okay. My, my business is just kind of like an all-in-one thing. Okay. So, you know, so after you, that, what happened next? Um, well, I got to learning the 3D printer and that was a massive learning curve. Um, and then I found, uh, I think my first order actually was the low poly planner. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, and found it on Thingiverse, downloaded it, and it took me a good while to get the printer like nice and the way it should be, uh, you know, level and there are proper beds on them and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I think it was the low poly planner that got it going. Low poly planner, it, sweet yeah. man. So, so how does a business make money? Um, like, what do I charge or? No, like, so, so do you still also sell files? Do you just sell prints? Um, I've never really dabbled too much in selling files. Uh, I do have an Etsy page that has a couple items into it, but I have just been so busy selling actual prints itself that I haven't really had time to properly go in there and set that stuff up. Mm Mm-hmm. It or not so for the most part right now it is just just 3d prints what people are needing and fulfilling and if i'm a little bit on the slow end i continue printing a few things i have on my own uh-huh so actually, I'm, I'm curious how many people are in your town because it sounds like you're making it it sounds like it's a small town where it's just you know just a couple people uh probably about fifteen thousand. Oh, it's not that small it is definitely on the smaller ish end. Yeah, it's a smaller ish, but it's not that small. Yeah, I was no. thinking like, you know, <laughs> one stoplight, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, not quite that small, but yeah, yeah, it is definitely. Um, and a lot of people over here, I'm not going to say they're they're behind in technology, but they just never really bothered exploring what was out there. Mm-hmm. I mean. I, uh, I, I, only reason I got into 3d printing is I seen a Mandalorian 3d printed helmet for sale on Facebook. And I, like I had to have it and I just sold it like, you know, within seconds. And then he's like, Oh, I just 3d printed it. I'm like, all right, I got to look into this now. And, and, you know, then we got down to this venture years later. Yeah. So that's how you found it, huh? Very yeah. similar. Uh, I have a very similar story. I found it on Instagram and I was like, what is that? Cool, man. So what's working today in terms of marketing? What's, what's bringing in the, uh, the people? Um, well, surprisingly enough, uh, I, I just tried this out and the structural order I had came from this, which I didn't even really think anything of it. Uh, I went and created a business Google account and uh, Google actually wanted, like they wanted obviously your information about your business mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And then they planted a dot on my address of my actual company. It had underneath it 3D printed services. And no within, kidding. Yeah, completely free. Um, I definitely advise everybody to go check it out. Um, and within two, three days, I had this order. It was, uh, it was an $80 order. It cost me literally nothing to make. Nice, um, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I tried the paid Facebook ads. I got one order out of it. I had a lot of people, like more people than I was actually expecting to hit it up, but only one guy committed to it. 
Mm -hmm. Um, but for the most part, I generally just do that works well for me, like, uh, posting in the buy and sell groups, you know, every so often. Um, and then, you know, once you build that clientele up, you know, enough, you, you find yourself not even really doing that. Nice. You know, so do you, do you have a design services as well? Or is it just printing services? Uh, I, I, I generally just charge for printing. If it's something okay. like really intense, that's going to take some time to design. Um, you know, I, I will let them know like, Hey, like this, my, my time is free. Right. And how much do you charge for design services? That's a great question. Never done it yet. Not too sure. Um, I don't think it'd be really that much. Okay. No, because right, because you have to price that in for for the product, right? You have to 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 put in design time if it hasn't been designed yet, and then you for materials and and print time, right, for your time. Yeah. So, oh, totally. I mean, I I make well more than enough with print and and print and filament usage that I sometimes most time I don't even really worry about it. Mm -hmm. Type thing. Where, where are you getting your filament? Sadly, only off Amazon. Amazon. Okay. And what brand? Uh, I use, uh, my brand I've been really kind of going to right now is eSun. Okay. Um, unless it's a weird color, like my best color I sell and it's whatever brand is available is rainbow. So yeah. Those, those everyone loves colors. that rainbow. I agree. Especially oh, yeah. with those dragons. Oh my God. Everyone loves those. I've actually been tempted to print one. Um, oh, you're not selling them surprisingly. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, I, I only had the rainbow for the low poly planners. Everybody was like, this is just the coolest thing in the world. And uh, yeah, so I, I generally, again, whatever brand's available for that, but it's either eSun or I do the Anycubic White for litho things. Sweet. Uh, that's pretty much about it. I try to keep it to the same so I know okay. the product obviously works. And you basically just say stay FDM, right? Yeah. Cool. Cool, man. So, um, so what's next for you? What, what are you working on now? What's, uh, what's going on in the future? Uh, conveniently enough, uh, Mandalorian, um, Mando. I'm currently, uh, making my own suit. Um, I have about almost about half of it complete. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing it in between orders. Like I don't have, have anything going right How now. How many machines do you have? Uh, right now, I'm I'm limited to the two. I have a CR10 a version two and an any cubic Um Love to have more because when the orders pour in, man, I'll be 100 150 hours behind in printing, and I only have two machines. Like right, so you man, that's good, right? Because oh, now you have to invest in more machines because you can't fulfill your orders. So business must be good. It, oh yeah, but the problem with getting more machines is is having room. And where I'm at, uh, I would love to like look into a shop, but I don't quite make enough to justify it yet. So the little room I'm in, that's kind of like my little office. Nice, man. Uh, nice. I can only really fit two um, for now. I definitely, if I had a really small one, I guess I could fit that. But the two big ones, and, and they do the job like just beautifully. Sweet, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, Brandon, thank you so much for, for being here, dude. Thank you. That was great information. Um, yeah. so what's your number one tip for people watching us right now? Uh, patience, patience, take your time. This, this does not come overnight. Um, that's, that's the biggest one for me. There's so many times I wanted to quit and just be done with it because machines just all of a sudden stopped working, uh, and all that. And I just, you know, I was stressed out because I'm backed up. And I, and I, and I can't print the orders. So, uh, you know, yeah, my buddy who does, is at the brass nozzle there. He, he powered me through a lot of it and I learned a lot. So it's, it's, it's a lot of information to take in. Sweet, so, man. Yeah. So, but it's good that you have orders. It's oh yeah. having the problem of fulfilling orders is a good problem to have, but a problem nonetheless, right? Oh, totally. Totally. So you gotta be patient and persistent, right? That's exactly. Key takeaway. Sweet. Exactly. Hey, Brandon, thank you so much for being here, man. I really, really appreciate it. Um, oh, let's do this again in a couple of years. We'll do a Where Are They Now episode, yeah? <laughs> no, no, that'd be awesome.
Sweet. Hey, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. So that was the episode, and here's today's tip. Just start. You guys, look, you don't have to wait for things to be perfect before you start. And once you start, it's not going to be perfect anyway. I remember when I first started 3D printing, when I first started these, these businesses, it just wasn't perfect. It sucked when it first started, but you just have to start. What happens is as you start, your whole workflow, your process, your products, your entire business evolves and as it involves, it unravels a more efficient way of doing things and better products and services and so on and so forth. But that thing cannot and it will not evolve or show itself unless you start. Okay, so you gotta start, you gotta put in the work, you got, don't be afraid to just start. It's not gonna be perfect, it's not gonna be nice, it's not gonna be good looking, it just, you just gotta start. Because if you don't, it, it can't happen, you guys. So. Take the plunge, jump, get started today. That's your today's tip. Again, all the links from the show is in the description below if you're in YouTube and in the show notes if you're in a podcast player. Um, thanks again for tuning in. Again, if you guys want to know how to start a 3D printing side hustle or if you want to scale your existing 3D printing side hustle, visit me at 3dprintedprofits.com for more details. I'll catch you guys in the next episode.